I'll ask Brother John Beaumont if he would give our afternoon prayer. Let us pray. Most gracious and holy God, you are sovereign over all creation. We thank you for this day that you have provided for us. We lift up this time, uh, this council, these members of this council, that they may seek your wisdom and your guidance and the work that they do, the work you have called them to. We give you thanks and praise, and we do so in the strong and sure name of Jesus Christ. In his name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Brother John. Good to have you with us again. Thank you. I call this meeting to order. Mr. Clerk, would you call the roll? Mary Johnson. Here. City Attorney Peoples. Here. City Treasurer Martin. Here. Councilor Tyrone. Here. Councilor Carter is absent. Councilor Robinson. Present. Councilor Catt. Here. Councilor Pulliam is absent. Councilor Taylor. Here. Councilor Coleman. Here. Councilor McClendon. Present. Councilor Mundy is absent. And Councilor Holt. Here. Looks like we've got seven out of ten present. I heard from Councilor Pulliam. He's out of town. And I heard from Councilor Mundy. I believe he's ill at the present time. Uh, moving on, uh, first item on the agenda would be bid openings. We had two sets of bid openings. One of them was on the agenda. The second one failed to be placed on the agenda. You do have tally sheets on both sets of bids. The first set uh, would be on the painting of the water tank. And as you pointed out to me, it's a 500,000 gallon water tank, not a 500 not a dollar, it's a gallon. You have a copy of the bids in front of you if you've reviewed them. Could I have a motion and second them to send them to the Utility Commission for disposition? So moved. All in favor by aye. 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 Opposed, they are referred. The second set have to do with the West Memphis Streetscape, which is a, a continuation of the project that's underway with Main Street. You have a, a tally sheet there. Uh, we were looking at this in... Uh, Free council and there's tremendous difference in the bids for the public's yes. information only. One, one bid was for $78,960, and the other one is for $250,000. So there's quite a discrepancy in the bids, but yes. could I have a motion second to refer these to planning and development for disposition? So moved. Six. And All Mayor. in favor by aye. 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 Mayor, I would yeah. like to suggest that they proceed with caution because with the difference in the funding, are they bid? I agree with you. This certainly a tremendous difference. Yes. And uh, Paul was uh, was with us in pre-council. <clears throat> I didn't hear that vote exactly very clear. All in favor by aye. 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 Opposed. It's it is approved and they are referred. You have a copy of the minutes in your packet. Are there any additions or corrections? Motion to approve is submitted. Second. Yep. Motion second. All in favor by aye. Aye. Opposed? They are approved as submitted. Moving on, an old business. We have a third reading on an ordinance on rezoning. Uh, I would like to, I have some people that I want to make an exception and move up to speak on this matter. We have a Mr. Milton Yarborough. Uh, if he would come forward to the microphone and speak on this matter prior to the vote. Mr. Arbor, give your name, address, and uh, whatever information you want to bring forward. No, I... First of all, <clears throat> Mayor Johnson, and ladies and gentlemen of the council, I guess first we'd like to say we appreciate your dedicated service to the citizens of West Memphis. My name is Milton Yarborough. I live at 415 West Barton. My wife and I have lived at this location since 1991, and we've been residents of West Memphis since 1968. And we want to thank you at this time for the opportunity to address our concerns about the proposed zoning change before you now. In 2008, zoning ordinance number 2195 was passed designating the area as RE, which conformed to the majority of the properties already developed. There was a great concern expressed by the neighborhood to the Planning Commission at that time 
that allowing smaller lots could lead to the detriment of all the properties in the future. There's even a greater concern in the future as these homes become older and less property is available for development, that builders will be investing in properties and requesting zoning changes, such as this request before you now, that they may reduce lot sizes and build more houses. I think as you're aware that every day there are families that are seeking jobs and being transferred from other locations, even to Memphis, as I was in 1968, that have a great interest in living in West Memphis. West Barton and the surrounding area has a great appeal because of the schools. I, as well as those in the neighborhood who are present here today, and those that signed the petition, of which there was 97, and at this time, I would like to present that petition to the council uh, for, their, for their record. Yes, we ask that you deny this request to amend ordinance number 2195 and preserve the integrity of the neighborhood, not only for the present property owners, but for those in the future that may see it as a desirable place to raise their families. We as citizens of West Memphis look to the council to make those decisions that will best represent the betterment of our city. We applaud the decision that was made in 2008 to include this section of West Barton in the RE zoning district. And we feel that it is not the best interest of this neighborhood to take one half of one block and make an exception to this present zoning ordinance. I think I speak for the entire neighborhood in expressing our thanks to the council for allowing us to come before you and express our concerns for the future of the places we call home. I assure you that I'm not opposed to Mr. Ford building or developing this property as it is currently zoned. It has been a neglected and overgrown property for years, of which Part of that time was before Mr. Ford owned or acquired the property. We are confident that your decision will be based on your best judgment for the good of all those who have a vested interest in this neighborhood, not only at the present, but for the future as well. Thank you for your undivided attention. Thank you, Mr. Yarbrough. <clears throat> And on this same item, we had uh, a person request to speak on this item, and I'll move it up to the same location, and Mr. Mike Ford had signed up. Mayor Johnson and ladies and gentlemen of the City Council, I want to thank you for the opportunity to come and meet with you today. I realize that decisions sometimes can be tough. Leadership means always that we have to make tough decisions but fair decisions. I'm going to ask you today to make a decision that's tough, fair, and I'm going to ask you to remove the emotion from the decision. I want to talk to you and, and talk to you about the neighborhood for just a minute. I'm a property owner in that neighborhood, not just this property. My parents live at 130 West Roosevelt, where I resided for 18 years. But I want to talk to you about the particular property that we're talking about today. Number one, when we look at the neighborhood as it has developed over the years, we'll find that the smallest lot in that neighborhood has about 7,500 square feet in it. The current new zoning, the RE, in that particular section, and if you'll, and I brought a map as well to show you some of the other lots and how they are spread out through that section. The proposal that I'm proposing to do, the average lot is 13,000. 325 square feet. The largest lot in that little area over there has 26,000 square feet. The largest lot that I'm proposing to do is 16,400. So what you will find in that area is an average lot size of 14,200 square feet surrounding this property. The average lot size of which I'm proposing to build on that lot is three houses and the average lot size is 14,330, 350 square feet. So larger 
than the average lot size in the surrounding area. The smallest lot size over there is 50 foot wide. Okay, the lot and, and the smallest lot that I'm proposing to do is 65 foot wide. Okay, so as you can see, very proportionately, very much the same that we're looking at right now. The average distance between houses in that neighborhood is 25 feet. The average distance between the houses that I'm proposing to build is 22 square feet. So three feet different. Just to talk about the residential new little gerrymandered section that we've rezoned, let's talk about that for a minute. The current requirement requires that you have 20,000 square feet in a lot, okay? Has to be 100 foot wide, okay? If you are traveling west on West Barton Street, right next to the proposed lot that I'm talking about redeveloping into three single family residences with 2,000 square feet at a value of starting at about $200,000. What you will find on West Barton Street and Gibson that backs up to it are lot sizes that are an average of 13,977. I have the plat here and have them marked. Traveling west, continuing west on West Barton Street that backs up to Roosevelt. These are the properties that are the closest to the property in, that we're talking about today. The average lot is 16,699, so a little larger than what I'm proposing to do because I'm proposing to do an average of uh, 14,330, but still very similar in size. A little background, a little history. My wife and I purchased that lot in 2005. We made a business decision to purchase that lot based on the fact that we knew we could take that lot, subdivide it into three lots, and build three single-family residential housings. That's what the zoning was when we bought it. We made a business decision to purchase that lot based on the requirements at that time. Okay? We took that to the uh, Planning Commission the Planning Commission approved that lot split. I don't have to tell you about a whole lot about what happened to the housing market shortly after that. I made a second business decision. And I think one that probably paid dividends for me at the time, I decided not to develop those three properties just simply based on the current housing market. When I got ready to build those three houses in May of this year, I went down to Dennis Sorrell, no idea, that there was any problem that existed. I had my financing in order with the local lender to build those three properties. I was, had the property staked out, ready to build when I found out then. And I, knew, and I knew there had been a change in the zoning ordinance there, so let me back up and tell you I was aware of that. However, I did not know it affected my piece of property. So when the lot split was approved, I just once again, never had an idea that there would be a potential problem for me. The problem lies in the fact, and this is my fault, I hired an architect and I hired a surveyor whose job was simply to do the project and then record the plat. I did not know that a plat in the city of West Memphis expires in two years. No one ever told me that. But that's not anybody's fault other than my own and the surveyor should have filed that plat. If they had, we wouldn't be standing here today. But let's talk about some other issues that, that I think are really important. I wanna share with you, I, wanna, I just wanna show you this for a minute because when you talk about the lot sizes that exist in that area, by the way, and that, and and I really do respect everybody. Many of my friends live in that area. I lived there for 18 years, so I know a lot of people up and down the street, and uh, my parents still live in that area. I have no desire to develop anything that's not going to be good for the area and good for the city of West Memphis. Like most of you, I love the city of West Memphis. I've had opportunities to leave the city of West Memphis and would have done so had I so desired to do. But I love this town. I want to see this town continue to prosper and to grow. But in order for this community to prosper and grow, we also have to think progressively. We have to think about how we continue to redevelop 
are areas of our community that have either leveled out in their property values or are beginning to dip down. And that is one of those areas that no longer is, it is level. The property values are beginning to slip just a little bit. It has been a very stable neighborhood, and, and I don't want anybody to misread what I just said. It is still a very stable neighborhood. But in order for us to continue for that neighborhood to be stable, we have to look at ways in which we bring new people back into the community. We have to provide housing for younger folks, people who are looking to move here that want to make this their home. If you will just take a look at this area as it exists over there right now, I have taken the time to give you an idea of the lot sizes that exist over there. If you see something highlighted in yellow, that is a 50-foot lot. Okay? I did not mark all the lots. Lord, it took me all day to mark all the lots. But in fairness, I also wanted you to see how mixed this subdivision is. If you will look at the lots... This is not the prettiest way to do this. If you'll look at the lots marked in orange, those are 75-foot lots. And the lots in blue are 100-foot lots. Okay? Also, I will point out to you, this is your new residential estate zoning right here. Okay? You had to pick this whole area up back here. However, this is my subject lot right here. We chose for whatever reason, I think I know what reason, to leave the lots directly behind it because the lots directly behind it are all 50-foot lots. So we really cut that portion out and added additional lots. Directly across the street from this subject property is a 50-foot lot. Two doors down from that is another 50-foot lot. There are 75-foot lots here. This is the area that I was talking about when you right next to the property that I'm talking about building the three houses on, where the average lot size is 13,300, okay? 600, excuse me. Across the street, 16,6. But even within this new residential estate area, you're gonna find all sizes and shapes of lots. However, the fact is most of these lots don't even meet the new zoning. Most of them don't have 20,000 square feet in them. I'm going to ask you today to make a very tough decision. I know it's a tough decision. I have great respect for the job that each of you do, great respect for the fact that this city is run like a business, and I'm proud when I travel all across the great state of Arkansas to be able to say that the city of West Memphis is in good financial decision in a condition because you guys and ladies have made great decisions for this city. But I'm asking you today to remove your emotional hat because if you deny this, it is strictly an emotional decision. I'm asking you to base your decision on fact. The fact is these three houses meet the standards that are built within that neighborhood. There's no denying it. All you've got to do is drive up and down the street, and you will see that what I'm proposing to do, the lot sizes are consistent with the lot sizes that exist there. So, yes, I'm going to ask you today to make a very tough decision. And remember, these are my neighbors as well, my neighbors for 18 years. But I want to ask you to make the right decision Remove your emotional feelings about this and make this decision based on the facts that I have presented today. Mayor, thank you so very much for allowing me to speak today. And I, once again, I close by telling you how much I appreciate all the hard work each and every one of you do as elected officials. And thank you for your time today. We had additional people that had, would like to speak, but I'd ask them to uh, just limit it to one on each side for sake of repetition more than anything else. So that concludes the people that were authorized to speak. On the old business, Mr. City Attorney, this ordinance is up for the third reading. Would you read the title? The title of the ordinance reads <coughs> as follows, an ordinance to rezone property in the city of West Memphis, Arkansas, located at approximately 417 West Barton from RE single family residential estate to R1 single family residential. You've heard this ordinance read for the third and the final time. Do I have a motion to approve?
You've heard it read for the final time. Do I have a motion to approve? Hearing none, the ordinance dies for a lack of a motion and fails. That concludes the items of old business. Moving on into new business. We have the first reading of an ordinance on uh, fees for the ambulance service. I make a motion to reread 01 by title only. Have a second. Second. Motion second read title only. All in favor by aye. Aye. Uh, opposed? Would you read the title to 01? <clears throat> the title of this ordinance reads as follows. An ordinance to amend section 5.60.040. <clears throat> of the West Memphis Municipal Code regarding char charges for ambulance service operated by the West Memphis Fire Department and for other purposes. That concludes the first reading. We'll have it on our next regular scheduled meeting for second reading. <coughs> Under new business, we have one other item that I'm going to make a deviation on that signed up for citizens' request, but it's an item that uh, they're going to make a request of you for some action on. I believe Mr. Free is here. Uh, he has properly signed up through email, Reverend Coleman, uh, like you suggested that I start accepting. Yes. This is a project that's been going on uh, for years, I might add, uh, with the Mayfair Apartments, a, a, large, a number of years. They were here in the last 12 months with, I believe, this same company was being represented by a different individual at that time, and they were here and made a presentation there. Uh, they requested that I furnish him a letter of support, which I declined, and he wanted to know what he could do about it, and I told him he could, they could come and talk to the council, and if the council wanted to sign the letter of support, uh, I'd back off and leave it alone. So having given you a little bit of advance information on it, uh, Mr. Free, who is a spokesman for the group, name and address and, and your request. Thank you very much, Mayor Johnson and City Council. Thank you for your time. My name is Fred Free with Community Development, Inc. Uh, we're located at 4110 Eaton Avenue in Caldwell, Idaho. And uh, it's a great time to be in Memphis, nice and hot, and it's nice and cool in <laughs> Idaho. But here I am. Anyway, I miss the rains. Uh, I was here last uh, around the, at, at the first meeting in February, and uh, we were hoping to get uh, your approval uh, to get a, mayor, a letter of support from the mayor for applications to Arkansas uh, Development Finance Authority uh, for funding to rehabilitate and redevelopment the Mayfair Apartments. Uh, we were rushed at that time. City Council did not have adequate information, I will admit. Uh, we were up against the deadline. We got started late. and. It, it, was, it was not a good situation, and the, the council did not approve our request at that time. Uh, since then, uh, we have continued uh, to develop plans and ideas for that, uh, and we've gotten some important input uh, from the community and from the two council members from that ward. We met with uh, council member Robinson and McClendon in June, and, or I guess it was towards the end of May, uh, and also uh, the city planner attended that meeting. And we had got some good input and some good ideas from them and uh, carried on with their suggestion to hold a neighborhood meeting, which was held, uh, I think it was the 7th of June, if I remember the date correctly. I uh, held that at a church down the street from the Mayfair Apartments uh, and got fairly good attendance from uh, members of the community. I was not in attendance at that meeting, so I'm going to ask uh, one of our co-sponsors, uh, Dr. Calvin King, who is the director of the Arkansas Land and Farm Development um, Corporation, to kind of give you a, a brief summary of the input and the results we got from the neighborhood meeting. So, Dr. King. Good afternoon, Mayor, City Council members. Uh, I must say it was it was a very uh, uh, exciting meeting you know with the community and the input that we received the community concerns uh on, on the part of councilwoman uh robinson as well uh and wanting to, that to occur uh, some of the specific concerns that uh that came from the participation of residents uh, was on the size of the properties uh, the actual uh, apartments itself and of course, the architects, they're going to address any question in reference to that uh, in the plans uh, that are being developed right now uh, around the property. Uh, I must say this, 
that was a real concern, in my impression, that the community, they would like to see something done about the situation as it presently stands. And the status as it is now that, you know, it is not providing anything in any positive, productive fashion uh, to the community, and I'm assuming the same as such uh, to the city, uh, possibly more of a liability uh, to that extent. Uh, the other is that what is being proposed is something that would would be an asset, would be a major contribution overall uh, for the community and what it would have to offer uh, as far as residential quarters, as surface is concerned, housing is concerned, uh, and an overall improvement. And that's what we're proposing to do. Arkansas Land and Fund Development Corporation, you know, we're a community development corporation. We've been in the business for some 32 years, uh, both in housing development and partnership, uh, such as with Community Development uh, Inc. Uh, is concerned. Um, both in the Crittenden County area as well as other areas. Uh, I commend the community uh, for wanting to voice their opinion and the input that they made uh, on the part of what they see as being the future uh, for the area. And, you know, we're looking forward to working with them. And any other questions you may have in reference to that meeting? Ms. Roberts. No, I just appreciate you attending the meeting. It was raining. We had a pretty good Yes. crowd the pastor was very generous to open his doors and the input was positive and all i can say is that we're ready for the go ahead okay oh uh, I, I have one question we yes. did talk about the uh i think with the 700 square foot yeah they uh, apartment that. and do, do they have them where we can see them the new Right, we're going to we're going to address that. I know the about the architects they're going to address the specifics uh, uh, from the as far as the expansion of CEPH is concerned. You know, one thing as you know, it was sort of as uh, Fred just recently gave reference to things were sort of put on hold, and the fact that you know we do need the letter uh, from the city in order for us to proceed ahead and to give the architects uh, the uh, the go ahead as well in doing dealing with the redesign. We've had all those discussions, uh, uh, specifically as it relates to what the community concerns were. The expansion on both the 600 plus some um, odd square foot, what that would regard uh, would uh, involve some possibly combining uh, of some of the units to create one that would provide the type of size, and they can speak more to the specifics on that and what that would look like both in design as well as square footage and other things from that perspective. And, that, and, and other things that would make it both more marketable and more appealing from the overall community perspective. Okay. Any questions? Thank you. Thank you, Dr. King. Now I'm going to introduce John Emberton from Hudspeth Gary Architects. Uh, to kind of describe in better detail and more accurately than I could, some of the changes uh, we're proposing to make to those units to make them larger and more marketable and, and really uh, more in line with what's offered in the rest of the community. Uh, thank you for this opportunity to speak to you. Uh, we have been uh, asked and uh, we have looked at the possibilities of combining units, expanding units, and reducing the overall numbers of units in order to provide some uh, apartments that have four bedrooms, some apartments that have nicer sized living rooms and master bedrooms. Uh, some of the apartments will be potentially vaulted ceilings on the second floor to increase the spaciousness and the marketability, uh, improve the light. Um, we would be uh, reducing even further from what we showed you the last, uh, excuse, last time, the total number of dwelling units by doing this. We're not proposing to uh, expand it from where we were previously. We're still creating the open spaces and uh, putting in the additional new amenities that we had originally talked to you about. So unless we need to review some of the things we covered in our previous meetings, I'm open to any questions. John, you made a statement, and I, I'm not playing with words, but you said we looked at it, we have looked at this proposal as to adding larger units. Have you looked at it, or are you adding larger units? We have been instructed by the developer to see how many of these units that we can combine into larger units by eliminating units, basically, Bill. We're going to be taking units out, taking that square footage into adjoining units to make those remaining units more marketable. But we do not know how many at this time? 
We're looking at <clears throat> probably taking an additional dozen units out of the mix that exists in order to be able to expand approximately 24 to 24 to 30 of the other units into larger units that that will be more marketable we think how many total units will you end up with after all of this i think we had talked about a reduction of about 12 units yeah 12 units it was 110 it was 110 would be under 100 a little under 100 <clears throat> still a size that makes it attractive and makes it the right size for full-time management, full-time maintenance, uh, to be able to staff it at the levels you need to have uh, for a facility like this. Any other questions of either John or Fred or? And once we get past this initial stage, Mayor, we can, we'll be developing floor plans for each of the unit types to be offered. It's a little premature without knowing that the city would back you and, and going forward to, to expend the, those kind of energies and, and time and money commitments until we feel like we've addressed the, everything the city has asked us to address. Once you get your, if you get your letter of approval today about how long will it take to get the project going and how long will it take to complete the project? When, when they turn us loose to start development plans, it'll take us, we'll spend probably between three and four months just to get the, the plans developed. Now, I don't know what the funding schedule is exactly, and Fred can talk to that, but it'll take us between three and six months to, to be ready to break ground. And you'll be finished by when? What Usually year? a project of this type will take around 12 months to complete from the time it starts. Because I think someone said in the meeting that we held it would be about uh, 2015 by the time it's totally completed. Depending on when we're actually able to start, that, uh, that could be true. I, I know that was... Uh, Councilwoman Robinson, I know that was one of the concerns that you'd expressed and also the, the neighborhood. and. Uh, the next application round uh, will be around the beginning of February again in, in 2013. And it will take about three months for funding decisions to be made after that. So that gets us to May, let's, let's say around the end of May. Uh, we'll have preliminary plans done. So kind of we'll know what we want to build, but they won't actually be construction drawings. So they'll need probably about three months to do the construction drawings after we get the uh, announcement of the award of funding. So that takes us into August probably before we can, can uh, we'll have the plans done. We have to you know, submit to the city for review. We have to close on the construction financing. I, I suspect we won't be able to start building until close to the end of 2013. That 12 month construction time, be done around the end of 2014. So end of 2014, beginning of 2015 is probably when we'd start lease up. Yeah. I wish we could go sooner, <laughs> no. believe me. Wait this long. Mayor, I guess my question is, the window of opportunity with ADFA, uh, what is your filing date? I'm sorry? Your filing date, your window uh, with ADFA. They haven't announced the actual date yet. Last okay. year, I think it was the, if I remember correctly, it was the 5th or the 6th of February. Okay. So it'll be right around the same date. It, it's usually on a Friday, the first Friday of February. My only concern is, is asking the council to grant a letter uh, of recommendation when I have just I've not seen what you're actually going to be building. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I know there's been a lot of communication. I know you've listened to the neighborhood, and I truly appreciate that, but mm -hmm. still have nothing in, in print for us to see. Yeah. And with that window of opportunity being that far down the pipe, uh, is it that difficult to go ahead and present your drawings and let us look at it and bring it back up at the next council meeting? We could, we could have floor plans, and then we, we do have renditions of the, mm -hmm. the kinds of finishes and the way the exterior of the buildings would look. Correct. Um, now, I mean, all that will have to go through DRC anyhow, but I'm just curious right. about, you know, is it truly going to match up? How many units will there be? Uh, mm -hmm. What's the market analysis on us? What's going to be the rental? How is it going to work? Mm -hmm. Just like to have some information. Uh, the project uh, on the surface, uh, I like you're doing something with a plotted area that the decimal needs something to <coughs> run to, but just need more information from my standpoint. Right. I can't right, speak right. for the rest of the council, but that's just me. Right. It's, I've, I've been a little bit hesitant to turn the architects loose w without getting a better feel for how the city council was going to respond to us coming back and asking again for approval. 
Um, I was hoping today you'd get, authorize us to work with the mayor uh, to get to the point where he's ready to sign a letter of, uh, to support our applications. We could certainly uh, contribute it, uh, or provide additional information like floor plans and, and an exact unit count after we've done the thorough analysis. Uh, I'm not excited about traveling all the way back from Idaho again for a city council meeting, but we can have people who are closer by come and, and appear directly in front of the council and ask for that approval after we, you've had a chance to look at that detailed information, if that's what you want. Uh, from my standpoint, I definitely can't speak for anyone, but your need to travel back would, from my standpoint, would not be necessary. You have more than competent people here with you today. Uh, Appreciate that. They can that. present that. And, we're, we're, we're very uh, lucky. And on the with surface, the everything sounds good. I just need a little bit more. <clears throat> okay. Basically, yeah. this is just a letter of approval that you're asking us for today. And even once, if we decide to give you that letter of approval, it does not mean that you're going to get the grant. Is that right? That is correct. Okay. Yes. So what you're doing is just asking so you can see whether or not you will qualify for the grant. I have no problem yes. with that. Mm -hmm. We've met with you all, and I think putting that much money into this project, I believe that you will do what you've said. And it's not like you're just going to go in there and start building. You'll have to present your plans before the planning commissioners. And of course, city council can always look at that. So I, I don't feel bad about that idea mm -hmm. of going forward with it. Yeah. And it's oh, the word that Marco and I are representing that. I feel if he and I are, are on board with you, I, I pray that everyone else will, yeah. at least the majority, to give you the go ahead. And also, if uh, Marco, if I may, just one thing. I'm getting, I don't want to misstate what I'm thinking. I was concerned about if AFTA grants the recommendation, is there a liability issue, you know, if we deny the drawings? You know, does that put you in a position with them? And I, I just want to make sure from a liability standpoint, we don't do something that could adversely hurt someone. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we would, it would make perfect sense for us to make sure you're happy with our designs and what we were doing before we actually submitted the application, okay. even if we already had the letter of, of support approved. I was just going to add that uh, my decision on the will of the people that was at that meeting that live right there, mm -hmm. so they want us to proceed with it, so I'm in support for it. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. So really what we're asking for today is just a, approval to work with the mayor uh, to get a letter of support for our applications. And if, if we don't have a problem with that being conditioned upon you being able to look at the floor plans and the size of the units and number of units before uh, he I, actually signs the letter. I think we've had quite a bit of discussion. I'd like to make a motion. I second it. Okay. Have a motion and <clears throat> the motion, motion and is second. to to grant uh, the mayor to write the letter of, of approval. I will write that letter provided those members of the city council that vote yes sign on it also. That's okay. I want their signature on it. Uh, I think you know the problems I went through before. I think you were very much aware of the problems and the legal ramifications that showed up in it before. And right. I'm not comfortable with signing it on my own. If every member of the council will sign off on it, uh, I'll sign off on it. Uh, not every member, every member that votes for it. Okay. And, and you know what I'm addressing, uh, the legal difficulties. Have those been resolved? Have those problems been resolved that existed? Yes. Now, I need to make sure I understand exactly what you're referring to in, in terms of the uh, legal I issues. I would think you know. Okay. Does, it, does this have to do with, with ADFA and their approval? No, and it has to do with your internal problems. Our internal problems. Oh. Um, your, your predecessor that came here. Right, right, right. And, and there were some changes between what I told you at the February meeting from what he had represented before, when he had come and, and met with you earlier. Uh, he, he is no longer with our company. So in, in terms of, of uh, in, any issues that you might have with him or that we might have with him, those are resolved. He's, he's not connected with us any longer. Uh, and, and if that's what you're uh, referring to, yes, those legal issues have been resolved. Okay. Okay. Any other any other discussion? We have a motion and a second to authorize a letter of support to ADVA on behalf of what the 
What's the company name? Community, Community Development Incorporated. Okay, you have the record. Okay. Any and here, no other discussion. Yes, discussion. I've got a question. Yes. I guess this question is going to be to the city attorney. Uh, the letter of support or recommendation. How how binding is that on the city? What what does it put us? Does that just authorize us to give them the authority to proceed with the loan? Or what does it do? That, that letter of support is an element of the application that they are making for their financing. And uh, it, it doesn't obligate us in any form or fashion. It just simply completes the package of information okay. that they need to submit to get their financing. Okay. So they would not be able to get their financing without this letter. I, I don't know if it's totally prohibited, but I know that's... It, it's it, a prerequisite. It, yeah. It's a prerequisite. Okay. Thank you. Any other comments? Mr. Clerk, since I want everyone to sign with me, call the roll. Councilor Tyrone. At this time, I'm going to abstain until I can get some more information. I'm, I'm all for Mayfair being approved. Lord knows it needs it. Uh, but I think there's still some concerns uh, that haven't been addressed. Councilor Robinson. Yes. Councilor Catt. Yes. Councilor Taylor. Yes. Councilor Coleman. Yes. Councilor McClendon. Yes. Councilor Holt. Yes. Councilor Tyrone, do you want to vote? I'll vote yes. Everybody's in favor. Okay. Okay. Your names. It, it is passed. Uh, that concludes the items of new business. Moving on, I have need permission to pay power equipment company, and that number is incorrect. The, what we need to pay them is 159 and you approve the purchase at the last council meeting, and this is just to approve the payment. So moved. Have a second. second. Any additional discussion? All in favor by aye. 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 Opposed? It is approved. Uh, under committee reports, I'll start with insurance. Yes. Let me see if I can get together. Insurance did meet on the uh, 28th, and we did some things that I think our citizen would be proud of. Uh, we talked with uh, several insurance companies. And we ended up uh, doing some things here. Once again, the hardest thing to do, uh, we requested a 15-month uh, uh, contract. And what the 15-month contract did, uh, it would put us on a calendar year uh, basis as far as our deductible is concerned. A lot of you may remember when we changed last year in the middle of the year, a lot of our people who had already made their, or met their deductible for the year, had to start all over again with a new deductible. Also, uh, new out-of-pocket monies. But with this contract, uh, effective uh, October 1st, we would have a new company. Uh, the new company is going to be Cigna. We've had Cigna before. And we got excellent service out of Cigna and we're hoping for the same service. Now, everybody who have already made the deductible for the year will not have to make another deductible. As you can remember now, deductibles are calendar year deductibles. So come January 1st, everybody will have the new deductible, but not now. The deductible you already made is going to carry on. The next thing is uh, the out-of-pocket have not changed. If you have already made your out-of-pocket deductible, then it's going to be the same as far as uh, until the year ends, years end. And once again, it's going to change again, just like uh, it's, it normally do on the first of the year, which is a calendar year. And this way, we will be back on the calendar year deductible, and we don't have to worry anymore if we change companies about having to make two deductibles in the same year or you already made uh, all of your out-of-pocket expenses, your $2,000, and then have to go back through it again. So we will not have that problem again. Uh, but before we go any further, I would like to, first of all, uh, thank the people who worked so hard uh, on that, trying to get that done. Uh, Dwayne Douglas is not here. He worked with us. 
Uh, Frank Martin this year, he worked with the council on it. And of course, the council members who worked so hard, uh, Councilman uh, McClendon attended a couple of the meetings. Uh, Council uh, Ramona Taylor, she was here all the way. We thank, thank her. Uh, Council Tri uh, Cat was here all the way. Uh, and we thank him. And, uh, and of course, Council uh, Willis Monday worked with us uh, all the way. So we think that we have a good plan in place. Uh, basically, it's the same as our plan with United Healthcare was supposed to be. And so uh, we feel good about it. And of course, with that being said, uh, Mayor, I'd like to make a move that we uh, accept uh, the proposal or bid from uh, United Healthcare as our city's carrier. I mean, a signal. Excuse me. Excuse me. Signal. <laughs> you know, we're not covering the whole city. No. no. Would you incorporate into your motion to uh, that Matthew Glass be appointed our agent of record? Yes. Second. I have a motion and second that we accept the, the bid of Cigna for our employees health care, employees and dependents health care coverage, and we appoint Matthew Glass as our agent of record. Any additional discussion? All in favor by aye. Uh, aye. Opposed? It is passed. Uh, Mayor, yes, I'd like to also add something. Uh, Matthew Glass, stand up, please. He's one of our uh, younger uh, businessmen in our city, and of course his office across the street at Fidelity Bank. So if we have a problem with him, we can just go across the street and beat him up. That is true. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you, man. Does that con conclude your report, Rep? Yes. Okay. Budget? Yes, sir. I passed out in pre-council the recommendation from the Budget Committee that met yesterday concerning the Roberta Jackson Neighborhood Center. This uh, resolution will be presented to you at the next council meeting to complete the funding for the remainder of this year. I also passed out in pre-council the two sales tax reports. Uh, one for the Southland Gaming and one for our sales tax. Sales tax is $165,000 above budget for the first eight months of this year, and Southland Gaming is $458,000 above budget for the first eight months of this year. Now, everyone has a copy of the appropriations report and their binders out front if okay. they didn't pick them up yesterday. That concludes your report? Yes. Police? Uh, police Commission met August 23rd. Uh, just a summary of some of the things discussed, Neighborhood Watch and National Night Out was discussed. The night out is scheduled for Tuesday night, October 9th. Rain date is Tuesday night, October 16th. Internal Affairs investigator was acquitted on all accounts in a recent trial in Little Rock. Uh, fugitive Eddie Tribble was caught at an apartment in Marion, Arkansas. Police Department is currently interviewing for dispatchers at this time. Uh, there are no open uh, patrolman slots as full at this time as well, which is good news. Uh, code enforcement officers, officers position uh, was discussed at length, and uh, that is in order to have an actual patrolman out helping with our inspectors on code enforcement. Okay. That's it, Mayor. Thank you. Uh, public Works. Uh, Public Works met this past Tuesday, and we discussed the code enforcement officer and that that would be uh, included in the uh, 2013 budgeting process, that we would not encourage uh, any movement before that budget. Uh, and uh, Mr. Sorrell did report that Mr. Luger and Christine Bird, along with himself, have been meeting with police officers and training them in code enforcement so that that can be a cohesive approach to it. We did hear a claim for damages. No action was taken on that. Uh, the city engineer's report, we're still working with the uh, East Arkansas Regional Solid Waste District on developing a small scale recycling program. The signalization project is on uh, schedule and progressing well. The Southland Drive phase two, the proposals are due in, yes, today, the sixth for that project. Uh, to select the engineering firm. The Tourist Information Center, the ribbon cutting is scheduled for October the 30th. Uh, I believe street overlay maps should have been put in the packet. If not, we will get those to you. The city engineer has uh, made recommendations for the streets to be uh, overlaid. And that concludes my report. All right, thank you. Uh, <clears throat> not in a report, but we passed, uh, Frank passed out a schedule of the funds that are available for distribution and I think we want to go ahead and distribute the $3,821.42. Uh, I believe they 
with some discussion of that in pre-council. Uh, half of it has normally gone to the Good Neighbor Center and half of it to the Delta Neighborhood Action Council. I make that motion that we split it 50-50 between those two agencies. Have a second. Second. All in favor by aye. 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 Opposed. And he also passed out the list that shows how much you have individually to distribute to charities of your choice as long as they qualify. Okay. I have, I'd like to make a uh, donation to Seven hundred out seven forty four one to the Wonder City Boys Club. I think y'all like Jackson Boys Club, we call it. And two forty and two forty four to the uh, girls club. Y'all like Jackson Girls Club. But Wonder City Girls Club. Now wait a minute. Okay. I, I believe you just I believe you just overran your allocation. Did I? He's mad about that. <laughs> two seven forty four and two hundred. I thought you said two forty four. Maybe I did. You did. You did. Well, two hundred. Okay, two hundred. Okay. The balance. The balance. Uh, to who? To the Wonder City Girls Club. Okay. L.I. Jackson. Jackson. Jackson Girls Club, and the Boys Club is Wonder City. Wonder, Wonder City, City Boys, Boys Club. Club. So, okay, so seven forty four to Wonder City Boys Club, and uh, two hundred to. L.I. Jackson Girls Club. Thank you very much. Anybody else have their distribution they want to vote on today? Mayor, if I have a council permission, just give the entire funds uh, to families in transition. Families in transition. Tracy. Anybody else? Hearing nothing else, could I have a motion and a second to approve these two dis distributions? So moved. Second. All in favor by aye. 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 Opposed? They are approved. And I want you to note that the Reverend Coleman just took the odd penny. <laughs> <laughs> that you wanted. <laughs> that was mine. You didn't get it. <laughs> okay, moving on. Uh, have no appointments? Have no announcements? Mayor. Mayor? Yes. yes. I got two announcements. You, you want to go first? Okay, yes. Okay, one announcement I'd like to make is the uh, Arkansas Department of Health, in conjunction with the Black AIDS Institute, uh, we'll be hosting an annual greater than age testing tomorrow at uh, from uh, from 10 to 2 uh, at the uh, neighborhood center. That's from 10 to 2 at the neighborhood center. It's testing for age, uh, and we would like everybody who's interested, please come by. It's a testing would not cost anybody anything, but it's just uh, to make us aware of age, and we can just test to make sure how we stand. And that's tomorrow from 10 to 2, and it's sponsored by the Arkansas Department of Health and in conjunction with the uh, uh, Institute of the Age Institution, Black Age Institution. Thank you. Uh, something else uh, I want to mention here. One of our, one of my constituents uh, came to me because we're concerned about the grass situation in our neighborhood, very concerned. One uh, person came to me and said, why don't we talk to our people about, say, in a, create an adopt a lot program. In other words, if it's a lot beside my house and the city is already cutting it, but the people don't cut it, then the person right beside it cut it. Cut that vacant lot. Now, one thing may happen if you start doing that, that means the absentee landlords will never cut their lots, but it still will be clean. And we feel like if people would take that initiative to start cutting the lots beside them, then the city may be able to work with them and doing some things where we, they could benefit from, from keeping the neighborhood clean other than just the fact of knowing our neighborhood is cleaner because we, we've got to do something. But the person that came to me with this idea, I think it was an excellent idea, uh, the adopt a lot. And of course, we may be able to go further with it. Once people take the initiative, we may be able to do some things to help them. And I'm, I'm thinking some thing, running some things through my head right now. If uh, absentee landlord never cut the lot, city's been cutting it all the time. If these people just take the initiative of cutting it, then we may be able to do something to maybe further on down the road, give them ownership or something. Uh, or if the city have any liens and the people want to uh, pay taxes and things of that nature, they could acquire the property and the city re relinquish whatever liens we have in their favor. So uh, we want to 
encourage our people to take control of our neighborhoods because right now uh, we've got to do something about the problem. That, that all I have. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Mayor, uh, first I want to uh, give condolences to two of our city employees. Uh, Mr. Roy Gray lost his mom, Ms. L.V. Gray, as well as uh, James Clay lost, with the sanitation department, lost his stepdaughter, uh, Ms. Wendy Moore. I want to definitely send out prayers to them during their time. Also, I want to recognize uh, Crinton County Human and Civil Rights uh, President, Mr. Daniel Hatchick, as well as the NAACP President, Shibaka and all of the members of you all this here. I want to make an announcement on behalf of the uh, NAACP. They are getting ready for their annual banquet. Um, it's October the 13th at 6.30 p.m. at the Eugene Woods Civic Center. It's entitled the Crittenden County NAACP's 33rd Annual Freedom Awards Banquet. The tickets are $30 in advance, $35 at the door. Tables that seat eight at $240. The ads are $100 for a full page. $75 for a half a page. Vendor spaces is available. And for any more information, you can uh, speak with the president of the NAACP, Mr. Shabak Afri. Okay. Any other announcements? <clears throat> I don't see any other here. I move that concludes the business items on the agenda.